Hey, Blank Van here, the happy husband. Gentlemen, just a couple of things I want to talk to you about. One of the things that women, wives, complain about so much is that when men do not take husbands, when men do not take their responsibilities around the house, and you give all the responsibility to your wife, even the decision making. Gentlemen, you can't do that. That that is so immature. And so I think a lot of times that when marriages fall apart is because the husband refused to mature in some areas. Now, when we both get married, right, me and my wife, we was young. But this should be a increase in maturity as the marriage go away, not a increase of being by yourself and being like a hermit. So, husbands, you got to be able to lead your household. So, you know, women might cite a lot of things why they get divorced because women are the number one reason why divorce happens. About eighty percent of all divorces are filed first by women, and they give a lot of reasons. And you can go online and you can search that out. But when you come down to the bottom line is, and I've been thinking about this for a long time, a long time. But think about it: it's really lack of leadership. And is really weak leadership. Because if you was a strong leader, like you was in your business, same as you was in your home, your home would be successful. Every divorce, to me, is like a man who ran a business, but he ran the business into the ground. And I hear men talk about governments and talk about who should be president in a way that government to be run, right? I mean, men always talk about that thing. But at, in the line, do you run your household like an efficient government? And the answer is no, or your wife wouldn't want to leave you. And so, gentlemen, you really got to ask yourself is, why don't my wife like me anymore? You really have to answer that. I know she says she loves you, right? That means she's going to stick by you because love is a commitment. But some of your wives don't like you. Why don't they like you? I mean, ask that question before you wind up in the courts and the judge decide how much money you need to pay. Because divorce is a real thing and she will leave you behind, right? Why? Because you're not exercising the leadership that God has put in you. You're not, you're not doing what you was made to do. And that is take people, your wife, your children, and guide them through this life and this life journey and experience with excellence, with greatness. And don't be worrying about other folks' flock, but just worry about your flock and the state of your flock. And so what is the state of your flock? Why does your wife have that big crease in the middle of her forehead? Why does she nag you all the time? Why is she cutting off sex? Why is she cutting off intimacy? And the answer is, it's not what she's doing, Adam. Is what you're not doing. So you got to step up to the plate. Now, you might got to a place in your life where you just don't want to. But that's just being hard-headed and stiff-necked. You know, one of the things that you can do that can create an atmosphere in your home, right, that is loving, that's careful, that's a place that people can prosper in, right? Matter of fact, why don't you preach the prosperity message to your wife and to your children? Right? And suddenly you get in it, why don't you preach it to them? And tell them that they the head and not the tail. And that they are above and not beneath. So, what can you do? One of them is just get on the side of your bed in your quiet place and say, I am responsible for my home. Own it. Eat it. And then process in your mind, what does that look like? I'm responsible for the grass getting cut. Not your 16-year-old son. I'm responsible that the bills get paid. Not your wife. I'm responsible for the cars getting fixed. Not, not your, your wife, not your children. But in that, you teach them responsibility. How can you expect your wife to take responsibility and your son take responsibility if you don't take responsibility? So that's something that you own. That's something to eat. And you might not have been in a home or a model of a home where your father took responsibility of all things. Now, in this, 
I know your wife is supposed to help you. She she you help me. So in other words, there might be some areas in her life and her character that she does better than you. Cooks, maybe she cooks better than you. Maybe she washes clothes better than you. You you put the dad on red shirt with the white clothes and everything turned pink. I get that because they're supposed to be a help me. But you are still responsible whether the laundry gets done or not. You're responsible if the house get clean. If your wife ain't cleaning the house, then hire a housekeeper. If the food's not being cooked, then hire somebody, you know, hire a chef. You say, if I don't make enough money, then you learn. See, once you take the responsibility of your household on you, God will give you the grace. God will give you the strength and God will give you the insight because your home is a small business and you are producing what? Godly children with godly characteristics. And, and you know, and you can't falter on that. You can't faint on that. You can't just trade this wife in and this family in and get another family and wife because you jacked this one up. You got to go in there, get down to the foundation, and then you got to build again. God's way. Because you already tried it your way. And hiding and putting your head in the sand is not it. It's up to you to raise your family. It's up to you to raise your children. It's up to you to instill them to them the, the characters that you want in a loving manner. Now, in this loving manner, that means you still bring correction to your wife and to your children. And I, and I mean that. You bring correction, but you don't do it like a dictator. One of the things that really kill marriages is when you fall for the okie doke, when you fall for the crocodile tears, which we're going to talk about on, on another time. But today, I just want you to own the fact that the reason why your household is jacked up is because of you. The reason why your wife doesn't like you is because of you. The reason why your children don't want to talk to, besides them just being teenagers, is because of you. And you have to equip and train yourself so this can happen. Now, one of the things I want to just offer to you is that continue to listen to my podcast, Blame the Happy Husband, but you also can write me, email me, and we can, and gentlemen, we can talk about these things. You know, Tuesday night, I do a live show that's on Facebook and on YouTube. Come in, watch, ask some questions. You know, especially if you're a young man and you got no, you had no father model you how you're supposed to be married. Because truly, not only do we have weak leadership in marriages, that men just do not know what to do. And that might be you. But I'm telling you, God wants you to know. God wants you to have wisdom so that your marriage will enter into the realm of joy and not hardship. God didn't ask you all to get married so you have a miserable life. He does know that when one falls, there's somebody else to pick him up. And it's better to go through this life to people who are in covenant relationship, who love each other and have each other back, who's telling each other, come on, you can make it. Grab my hand. We can make it to the top of this mountain together. We can go through the valley of the shadow of death together. We can handle it all together, no matter what life throws our way. Gentlemen, take the responsibility of your household and watch God move in a miraculous way. I'm Blaine C. Van, the happy husband, and I love you and I beat you to it. God bless.